Goldie's Barbecue, the number one barbecue restaurant in Texas, just revealed their secret method for cooking brisket over on the Mad Scientist Barbecue channel, and they did a side-by-side -side comparison. The Goldie's method went up against the foil boat method and the paper wrap method, and an expert panel judged which one was best. The results? Kind of inconclusive. But I've never used the foil boat method on an offset smoker, and I've never used the Goldie secret method that was just revealed, so I want to test those and compare them to the method that I use, which is the 190 and hold method. Should I change the method that I'm using? Is there a better way? That's what we're gonna find out in this video, so let's get smoking. Let's talk about the three methods being tested here. With the Goldie's method, also called the foil rest or foil hold method, the brisket gets smoked until it's done. Done for Goldie's means the fat is rendered yellow or caramel in color, the bark is super dark, and it feels tender and done when you pick it up and feel the underside with your fingers. In most cases, that happens for them around 195 degrees internal, but they don't necessarily go by temperature. After it's done, the brisket is wrapped in foil with a lump of tallow placed under the point. It's rested down on the countertop for a while, and then it's put in a holding oven at 140 degrees Fahrenheit overnight until service the next day. The theory behind this method is that the longer time unwrapped results in better fat rendering and bark, and then the long hold at a very low temperature of 140 degrees in the foil makes the brisket super moist for service the next day. Moving on to the foil boat method. This method was popularized by Chud's Barbecue, which is another great channel you guys should check out. The brisket is smoked a few hours until the bark is dark and set, and then it's placed in a foil boat until it's done. Again, done means the fat is rendered yellow to caramel in color, and it feels tender when you pick it up and kind of liberace it underneath with your fingers. The theory behind this method is the foil retains moisture leaking out of the brisket and helps protect the brisket from drying out while exposing the top of the brisket to help with fat rendering, color, and smoke flavor. Now on to the 190 and hold method, which is the method that I use for my briskets. The brisket gets smoked up to around 185 to 190 internal on average, and then it gets pulled off the smoker even if it's still tough and not done. In most cases, actually, it is not done, and that's on purpose. The brisket is then wrapped in tallow-soaked butcher paper or even clarified butter, which is what I've experimented with recently, and then it goes into a foil pan with half a cup of water, gets covered in foil, and put in a holding device to maintain a steady 150 degrees for 12 to 16 hours. The theory behind this method is the brisket has a lot more time to develop bark and color by going all the way up to 185 to 190, and then it's pulled off the smoker before it's done, letting the long hold at 150 finish the brisket and make it super tender and perfectly done with a texture that's closer to kind of prime rib than the normal fall apart, grainy, or worst case scenario, pot roasty consistency of a brisket that's finished above 200 degrees. Now, I had some challenges with this cook. The 190 and hold brisket came off the smoker when it was 190 in the point and 180 in the flat. Not really any problems there. After wrapping it, the internal temperature was around 175 or 180, so it had dropped down a little bit, and I put it in my sous vide holding chest at 150 at around 10 p.m. at night. None of the briskets were anywhere near what I would consider done at this time, though. Now, the remaining two briskets were still pretty tough, and the fat was still milky white, so I kept going an additional two hours or so, maintaining a higher smoker temperature of around 290, and at midnight, the points of each brisket were really probe tender and the foil boat brisket flat was done, but the Goldie style brisket, which didn't have the foil boat, was still a little bit tougher in the flat than I would have liked. As for the fat, the fat on both briskets also wasn't as yellow as I wanted it, but it was yellow in most areas. Uh, but I had to pull both briskets at the risk of overcooking the points because the points were clearly done. If I did this experiment again, I would probably rotate the briskets a lot more to get the flat to cook more evenly with the point. I would also check the airflow on my upper and lower racks and find a way to get hotter and more consistent convection over top of the fat caps to get that fat to render that yellow caramelly color shown in the Mad Scientist video by Barbecue Rat. That's probably the biggest challenge I'm working on right now because I'm not used to taking my briskets that far uncovered or unwrapped until they get that yellow or caramelly color. Usually I pull them when the fat is rendered, but it's still that soft, kind of squishy, milky white color. But it still falls apart in your mouth and tastes good. It's just not the yellow caramelly color shown in the video. Nonetheless, these briskets were still really good, had a lot of yellow rendered fat, and I was confident the 140 hold overnight would iron out any issues. The only thing left to do was test them out, which happened at around noon the next day.
All right, let's get this started. I'm gonna use a really simple scoring technique to compare the different briskets to each other. I'm gonna go on a scale of one to three and compare them in three different categories. I'm gonna go by appearance. Uh, so on a scale of one to three, how much do I like each one? I'm gonna go by tenderness. So on a scale of one to three, how tender was each one compared to the other? And then I'll go taste. Uh, they should all taste the same because they're all using the same rub, but I wanted to include that as well in case there's any kind of taste differences. And within each one of those categories, I'm gonna break it down by the point and the flat for each brisket technique or method that's displayed here. So let's get started based on appearance. What I'm seeing here is that I think that the foil boat method brisket looks a little bit darker than the rest. It looks a little bit blacker. The gaps are filled in a little bit more. Uh, the Goldie's method or the foil rested method has a little bit more moisture on top. So that could have come up from the foil from condensation and then come back down onto the brisket. And then the paper plus foil wrapped 190 method, it looks a little bit less dark. You can see how there's a little bit more uh, brown uh, on the bark than the other briskets, but it's really hard to tell the difference. So what I would say is I'd probably rank them for the boat method, I'm going to go three. For the Goldie's foil wrap method, I'm going to go two. And then I'll give uh, the paper foil 190 hold one in appearance. Because I like the look of the foil boat bark the best, I like the look of the Goldie's foil hold bark the second best, and the paper foil hold 190 technique that's kind of my third choice in terms of overall appearance and, and how it looks in terms of darkness of the brisket. And I think that that makes sense because these two briskets saw more time in the smoker at the tail end of the cook. So moving on to tenderness, we're gonna start slicing into these briskets. Brisket number one, this is the paper plus foil 190 rested brisket. Oh my God, it's looking super juicy. Super juicy, tons of liquid coming out of it. Look at that brisket waterfall. So that tells me that there's been a lot of fat and collagen rendering during that 150 hold. We'll look at the point here. Really juicy in appearance. Really nice looking smoke ring. Everything is looking great here. The fat is looking pretty well rendered. We're getting some of the yellowness up top, but you can see that I didn't trim uh, a lot of the fat away here. So there's still some white opaque fat down there. So I'll put that to the side while I slice the Goldie's foil rest method brisket. Just do the same cut in the same general area. Oh, that's looking really good too. That's looking really nice. The foil rest brisket has a lot of moisture. I'd say pretty much the same as the last one. A lot of moisture coming out of that seam fat. The brisket looks really nicely cooked. Smoke ring is a lot bigger than the last one. Again, because it was in the smoker for longer. And now let's move on to the foil boat. It's cut in the same general area here. This is a little bit bigger of a brisket. That's looking really nice too. So a lot of seam fat rendering. It looks really juicy. Looks consistent with all the other ones. Looks really good. The smoke ring's a little bit bigger than the first one because again, it was in the smoker for longer, but looks kind of similar to the Goldie's brisket. All right, now I'm gonna take a slice of the flat right in the middle of the brisket. I'll try to do a quarter inch slice, but they might not all look exactly the same. Folds over on itself. The fat, when I squish it, I mean, the fat is totally rendered. There's no resistance at all. It might be not completely yellow, but that fat is rendered. So I'll pull it apart, a little bit of a pull here, but it tugs apart perfectly, almost no resistance. Let's give this a taste. So just the flat, really good. No pot roastiness, no dryness, very moist. Oh man, when you get a little bit of the bark, it really adds a lot of flavor. You can taste the salt, the pepper, you can definitely taste the MSG, it's very beefy. Now moving on to the Goldie's foil rest, flat, slices really nicely. It's a bit thicker, but still bends over really well. If I pull it apart, well, let's look at the fat first. The fat is better rendered than the last one. There's more yellow fat here. It looks like the fat falls apart a lot easier. If I pull it apart, pulls apart like nothing. 
Really amazing taste. Let's just get just a piece of the flat here. Really good, consistent with the last one. The only difference here is that when I just get a piece of the flat, so I take like the, the top piece of uh, the point that was still resting on it off, and I'm just tasting the flat. On the bottom of the flat, it's a little bit crispy. So you can tell that it got a little bit too dried out during the cooking process, but it's just near the edges. But in terms of the fat on top of that flat, it's tough to say. I'd say they're pretty much the same in terms of how the fat tastes. I might change my opinion once I compare the point, but for now, I would say the foil wrapped and rested brisket is pretty much the same as the paper and foil rested brisket. The only difference is it had a little bit more time in the smoker, so uh, the bottom got dried out a little bit more, but still super good. Okay, moving on to the foil boat method brisket with the flat. It's slicing really nicely. You can definitely tell that uh, the bark is a little bit more crispy just by cutting into it. That's a nice slice right there. We can pull it apart <laughs> super easily. It falls apart like it's nothing. The fat is really well rendered. It's just as well rendered as the first one. There's a little bit more yellow fat, more of that yellow caramelly cover colored fat on top. The bark looks amazing. That's pretty much the big difference looking at it right off the bat. Let's take a bite of it. Oh, wow. Okay. You know what? I just, the bark is amazing, first of all but I got a bite of an area of the fat cap that was really well rendered. It was yellow, it was that caramelly color, and it does taste better, 100%. So the bark is better tasting, the yellow rendered fat is better tasting, the flat is a little bit drier than the other ones. Actually, it's considerably drier than the other ones. Not quite pot roasty, but it's, it's getting there. It's getting grainy, it's getting mealy, it's getting pot roasty, but still amazing. And the bark has so much flavor. So for tenderness, I'm scoring the paper and foil wrap brisket as my first choice. So I'm gonna put a three for that one in the flat. For the foil held brisket, it was really tender, um, almost as tender as this one, but not quite there. But it was still a lot more tender than this one, uh, which was a little bit drier. So I'm gonna put that one as a two for the flat. Now that's the flat. Now in terms of taste, my favorite tasting one was probably the foil boat uh, method. It uh, it had better bark, the bark had more flavor and smokiness. I just liked the, the texture of the bark in my mouth better. And it had more rendered fat, more of that yellow rendered fat, which is largely because of the way that I cooked it. If I had cooked this foil held brisket a little bit better, maybe it exposed it to the higher heat and the better airflow over top of the fat that this brisket had on the top rack of my smoker. I could have rendered the fat a little bit better, so I'm not really being fair to the foil held brisket, but just going by how it tastes, I'm gonna rank the foil boat uh, as number one, so I'll give that a three in terms of taste, and I'll give the foil held brisket the two, and then I'll give the foil and paper held brisket a uh, one, which was my least favorite in terms of in terms of taste. Okay, moving on to the point now. We're just gonna take a slice right down the middle here. And I'm going to get a pretty thin slice of the point. Looks really nice, the bark is amazing. There's some of that yellow fat. It does taste better, it does taste better. And this is the first time I've kind of realized it, so Kudos to that video with uh, Jerby and Barbecue Rat and uh, Jeremy from Mad Scientist Barbecue because I had no idea that that yellow rendered caramelly colored fat would taste this good or was better. Point is amazing, super tender, falls apart in your mouth. Bark is amazing tasting. I got no complaints about that brisket at all. Yeah, juicy, 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 juicy. Super juicy, nowhere near even a hint of pot roastiness. It's more getting into that prime ribby type flavor. And I think that's because I pulled it off a little bit earlier just when it hit 190 and parts of the brisket were even still 185. And it just goes to show that with this method, you can pull it at that temperature, 185 to 190. And as long as you hold it at 150 for long enough, it pretty much cures the brisket of any potential to not be done, which is, which is amazing because it takes all the skill out of it really or most of the skill out of it. Now the foil held brisket. So cut that right down the middle. It is a lot more 
well done than the last one. It's uh, it's almost a little bit too fall apart. You can see if I if I pull it, it kind of just crumbles. So I think that's because the point was getting a lot of the brunt of the heat during my entire cook. And because I left it on for another two or three hours as compared to the other one, I think the point got a little bit overcooked. Next time what I'd probably do is I'd, I'd flip the brisket around more often or cook it um, facing the side and not having the point facing the firebox. I think that's causing a lot of my issues when I cook brisket. But let's take a, a bite of this because it still looks really good. Oh man, that's really good. It's a little bit better rendered. It's better rendered, but it, it just has more of that dull kind of pot roasty, sandy, gritty, grainy taste because the point is a little bit overdone. But let's taste the fat here. The fat is a lot more yellow than the last point that I tried. Oh man, that's good. That adds so much to it. I had no idea. Mm. It just hits your, it hits the side of your tongue like different. It hits different for sure. That's good. The taste on this one is my favorite so far. Okay, now the last point with the foil wrapped method, or sorry, the foil boat method. Oh man, you can just, you can smell the smokiness more. It's almost like, it's beyond smokiness. It's like a, it's like a, the smell of a grilled steak that you get off of your grill. It's got that grill flavor. That's amazing. And the fat is a lot better rendered. It's, it's a lot more yellow. And I think that's because I had it on the top rack. It was just exposed to more heat on the top of the uh, the brisket. And you you kind of, when you're slicing into it, it has that like crunch, that sugar cookie crunch. Like Daniel Vaughn says, when, when you're biting into a brisket and it has that kind of crispiness, but it gives and it's the fat and the sweetness of the fat. I can definitely see how you might be able to get uh, sugar cookie bark a lot better with this foil boat method. I can tell that it's a little bit drier on the edges of the point already though. Look at that. Beautiful. So the bark is just so amazing. It's just perfect bark. It's amazing bark. It doesn't fall off or anything. It's like part of the brisket. It's really on there. Pull this apart. Pulls apart. Whoa. Falls apart. So similar to the foil rested wrapped one. Kind of a little bit too overdone in the point. Point's amazing though, super juicy. And this fat, that's good. The bark on the foil boat method is definitely better than the foil rested one. So let's talk about tenderness first. My favorite in terms of tenderness was the paper and foil rested brisket. It was um, clearly more tender, more juicy. It had more of that prime ribby type taste and it was nowhere near pot roasty or grainy at all. There was no hint of overcooking it's just perfectly done. And I think that's attributed to because I pulled it off at exactly 190, I didn't keep going. Between these two, I think the foil boat method was a little bit more tender, but it's almost exactly the same as the foil held brisket. And with both briskets, they both suffered from an overdone point. And that's completely my fault as the pit master who made these uh, briskets. So that's, that's my fault. So that's why I'm gonna give both of these ones two. So I'm gonna tie them. Because I think if I did it really properly, then they would be really, really tender. Uh, I don't know if they'd be as tender as this one, but they'd be a lot more tender than they are right now. Okay, in terms of taste, I think the paper foil method, I preferred the least because it had the least amount of that yellow, caramelly, really well-rendered fat. And uh, so I'll put that as a, as a one for taste. My second favorite in terms of taste was the foil boat method. It had more rendered fat. Uh, the bark tasted better. It had more of that smokiness, had almost like a grill flavor. Just amazing. So I'm going to give that a three. And I think to be fair, I could have cooked this one a lot better. I think I, I let the foil boat one sit on the top rack where it was getting a lot more top heat, uh, attacking that fat cap and um, rendering the fat a lot better than this one. But this one still got some pretty nice yellow fat, but it just wasn't quite there. Uh, but either way, I think if I did them each uh, perfectly and got the same amount of fat rendering on each one, I think I still would have picked the foil boat method because of the uh, extra smokiness and just the bark was amazing and had a ton of flavor. So I'm going to give the foil boat method a three 
I'll give the foil hold method a two. Okay, and now I'm gonna score these and add them up. Okay, I tallied everything up, and the third place is the foil and paper. That got 10 points total. Second place is the foil hold method, the one in the middle. That got uh, 12 points total, so two more points. And the foil boat method is the winner with 15 points. So uh, three more points than second place, which is pretty impressive. Uh, what I would say is the foil boat method and the foil hold method are amazing. Uh, I think I didn't really do them as much justice as I uh, could have during this video. What I would have liked to do is perfectly cook them so that the flat and the point were uh, perfectly in unison during the entire cook. I just overcooked the points a little bit and uh, the fat on top wasn't completely that yellow rendered fat that barbecue rat talked about in the mad scientist video. So I think I could have done a little bit better on those things and, and then these would definitely be clear winners for me in terms of taste, maybe not tenderness, but definitely taste and appearance, I would, I would go with either one of these. With the foil and paper held 190 method, for sure tenderness won out. It was the clear winner. It tasted a lot more like prime rib type texture, more beefy, whereas the other ones were a little bit more grainy, a little bit more pot roasty. But again, that could have just been because I overcooked the point, but even the flats were a little bit too much into that grainy pot roasty realm than I would have liked. The one thing that I would say is that if we had a different category for ease of use or for beginners, I would say that this foil and paper wrapped 190 held brisket would get a three out of three because this brisket is perfectly cooked, perfectly cooked. The fat is rendered. There's just not as much of that yellow fat. The bark still looks great and it's nice and juicy. And you could do that really having no experience. All you'd have to do is take it up to 190 and then take it out and hold it properly at 150 for 12 to 16 hours ish. And you'd get a perfectly cooked brisket. These other ones are more what I would call like pro level briskets. You can get a lot better taste out of them. And I think you can make a better brisket with these methods, but it does require a lot more experience because you have to get the point in the flat to cook evenly. You have to get a certain amount of airflow at a certain temperature over the top of the brisket to get that fat to render with that yellow consistency. You have to work to prevent the edges from drying out because it's gonna be in the smoker longer. So I'd say these methods are better. There's probably a reason that they're the methods used in top barbecue joints in Texas because experienced pro pit masters are making these briskets. But I would say from an ease of use perspective, this uh, foil paper 190 method would be the one that I'd wanna use if I was kind of a beginner or I didn't smoke brisket that much to get a perfect result without having to necessarily have the experience and the big offset smoker with the convection airflow that goes over top of the brisket. But that's kind of where I'm thinking in this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and, and learned something. I definitely learned a lot by doing this experiment. If you guys would like to talk everything barbecue and, and more about briskets and, and my thoughts on this experiment or would like to share your own experiments, then feel free to join my Patreon. I'll link it in the description section below. We've got an awesome little community there that just shares uh, information about barbecue and we all talk about our smokers and our latest cooks and how to get better as cooks and pit masters. So I hope to see you there and I'll definitely see you in the next video. Happy smoking.